bro. You got, you got, you got different. Yo, yo, he switched up. What's going on, brother? Yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, we're in the lots. We're here in lockdown, our third lockdown. Yeah. So yeah, no barbies, no nothing at all. So. Come on. Um, I wanted to say congrats on becoming a father recently. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. How's appreciate fatherhood that. treating you? It's been amazing, and I, um, my son is now four years old. He's gonna be four on the twentieth of February, and um, just just. You know, him reminding me of myself and um, teaching me new things also. And my daughter is like a, a year and a half. Um, and before, I've spent, five, you know, more, more than about five to six months on the road per year. So, like, the first three years or so, or first year, two years of his life, it was a lot of banging around and moving around. So he saw me a lot less than in this past year. And... That's one thing about this pandemic has given me such, uh, I, I'm so thankful for. It's given me a lot more time with my son, my daughter, spending time at home with my wife. It's been pretty cool. It's more, it's kind of the thing that centered me, you know what I mean? Because before I, I, I'm on the career and I'm, I'm paying attention to when the flight is, what show, what song I'm gonna sing, you know how that is. So uh, it's not that I forget the family, it's just that your, your brain is all doing that. So when you have time to sit down and chill with your fam, it's a blessing, man. So um, that's been a time for reflection as well. And, 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 you know, we don't get that, that opportunity much to have so much time with our families. Truly, man. Truly. Yeah. Um, take us back to your youth growing up. What was playing in your house? Who were some influential voices you used to hear? Oh, man. My mom was a Beakers fan, you know? A Beatles, Beatles fan. Yeah, my mom was oh. I wanna hold your hand. Yeah. All that shit. <laughs> and and you know, I I, I got a I, I revere the work too. I got a very big respect for them. Um my, my dad was always like, yo, that's the best band in the world. Mm. Um so also, you know, my my mom listened to all type of stuff from, from Neil Diamond to the disco music to you know, what was happening back then. And so did my father. And of course, reggae music. My father's a big party person, always in the clubs, uh, like myself. And so uh, uh, reggae music also is something that's played year long. So in Jamaica, so, you know, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Dennis Brown, you know, the works. Um, yeah, man. Those, these, are, these are things I grew up on. And, and Jamaica being the way it is, especially the third world nation that we that that is that has been, um, sometimes it's not much for the elderly or the very young to do, and music is our is our biggest pastime, so or one of our biggest pastimes along with sports. So um, yeah, I always kind of was into music that way, but as a teenager, it impacted me more when dancehall music became a thing. It became more prominent and. Uh, there was stars that I was like, yo, like uh, a 12 year old. I was like, this is my favorite music ever. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. growing up, it's been a, it was a mix. Um, Hip hop is factored into there also. But mainly, I would say dance. I was like my 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 music. There were there would be some albums or some artists from hip hop genre that I'd be like, yo, this is dope. And I'd check them out. But there's some years I kind of like leave it alone. I'm just listening only to dance up. Um, I think two are compar comparable. Uh, um, and so, you know, with that being said, the advent of, of everything else that's come after it, you know what I mean? Sure. Th that, that's reminiscent of, of all, all, all of that, that same stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So good vibes, man. But, but my listening ship, as I said, because of my mom, like I know Paul McCartney's work. I, I know, I know, um, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Paul Simon's work also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know people like Cat Stevens' work. She's a very big fan of Cat Stevens and his writing and the way he sings and, and, and plays music. Um, so it's a mixture of a bag of things, bro. And, mm. and I put all that together in what I do. How I like to express myself is dance because as I said, that's the first music that really my, they spoke to me in the way my friends and me spoke to each other. Okay. So, yeah. yeah 
Um, I remember when you dropped Stage One back in 2000 and yeah. playing it and, and, and really admiring how well it was all put together, including the skits, which I'd, I'd heard done on rap albums, but never on a dancehall album. Um, yeah. It was produced by Jeremy Harding, you know, a phenomenal producer. How did you yes. connect with Jeremy back then and what was it like putting that first album together? It was dope. You know, I was always trying to get into the business. I think from age 15, I wanted to be a producer. My mom bought me a keyboard at a at an old flea market where it was kind of cracked up, so she got a discount on it. And for those couple of years, 15 till about 17, I was just building back, like, you know, doing over rhythms. Uh, so it had a little drum section on it with, you know, I played the bass line and kind of play the drums and then let it loop and then play the bass live. And so for, for I had no other means of recording it other than a, a, a cassette tape beside it, which would just record how it sounded. And then I started to kind of write rhymes on over those beats, very fuzzy, very awful sounding probably <laughs> to, to a professional ear. But um, for me, it was magic. And um, I just kept developing it until after the age of 17, I had seen a kid named Don Ute. Then he went to school, his name is Jason Williams. And in Wilmer's Boys School, he was a table tennis champion and I was a swimming champion. And sorry, sorry, you, you there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was a swimming champion and he was a table tennis champion. And uh, that just, uh, that just gave me, seeing him record, I used to follow to the studios. I was someone who would help him at parties. We would keep parties and that stuff. and. Uh, someone that drive around and pick up the liquor and like make sure the boxes are in the same in a good place and help keep the gate and it inspired me i was like oh man sorry there's some scam call calling me every minute right now sorry <laughs> so it inspired me and i kind of got into it through that and then um just just kind of blessing my own way you know what i mean uh so so i knew zachary harding which is jeremy's little brother from just uh, social circles. We didn't go to the same school, but we knew the same type of peeps and um, playing sports together and that kind of stuff. And one day he saw me in a, a, like an open mic kind of thing. Uh, and I was just DJing, I had one song and he was like, yo, that's dope. Why don't you come to my brother's studio? And I was like, I didn't know your brother I had a studio. I didn't really know Jeremy at the time. I just knew Zachary and he took me over there and um, you know, the rest is history. We, we started doing dub plates mm. and then after the dub plates and started getting popular. And um, we, we started to put out singles. And then one day I was at a signing. Uh, 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 we used to do album signings back in the day, like go to Tower Records in Manhattan. Sure. And VP Records would put a compilation of different artists together. And I was one of them. And I was standing up beside Chris Chin and he was looking at the crowd and they were really reacting like crazy to me. A lot of ladies and he was like, yo, think about doing an album. Now, Chris Chin was, he, he owns VP Records and I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll think about doing an album. Mm. So me and Jeremy started to put together all these singles that we've done and do a couple more. And, um, you know, we really liked that part of, of a hip hop album where, where there was, there was um, you know, skits and it kind of added to the whole mood of the album. You could probably get a little bit of a different side of the personality of the artist while listening to those uh, uh, skits, you know what I mean? Uh, so so we just went in. We was just like, yo, let's get creative and let's do this. So that process took like probably three years before all of that came together. And mm -hmm. so by that time, we, we actually knew each other. I, I, like we, we, we were seeing eye to eye on how things were to happen. And, he was a producer and he wasn't my, my, my manager, but I was taking so much calls like, yo, what date? I know, wait, hold on, I'll soon do that dub plate. And <laughs> he just took one of the phones from me and said, yo, he can't take that date right now. And he hung up and he said, yo, listen, I'm gonna tell people I'm your manager from now on, uh, you need help. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. And it started like that, just like as a friend. And then we blew the world, man. We blew the world. And so, so yeah, big up to him. He's still a good friend of my own. Um, we, we, we're not moving as management and artists anymore. That relationship became strained. 
after a while, you know, just vision and, you know, his vision for me or, or my vision for where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So we amicably just parted ways in that respect, but we're still good friends today. Right? And I still, still discuss music on that level, which is the most important thing to me, sure. you know? Yeah. yeah. So 28, one years after that first studio album, your new album's ready to drop entitled Live and Living. Yeah. Um, set for release in March this year. March is 12th. What, what was the, the reason behind the title? Um, you know, a lot of people in the music industry, they look at me and they're like, oh, you're doing well still internationally. That's great. But even in Jamaica here, they say, oh, dancehall is dead. And I hate to hear that. Because dance our music existed before people like Shaggy took it, you know, or Shaba took it international and myself. Mm -hmm. Um and and it and it and it was the and it is the heartbeat of our people, is what we like, is what we dislike, it's our dreams, our aspirations, it's our problems from day to day, it's our romance, it's you know, it's our our bravado. And so um we're speaking about ourselves and and you know if the world doesn't get it because of sales, then that's one thing. But but um, I just wanted to make sure that people understood that we are still live and living. We we are here. We're gonna kick it any which way it is. So not because the genre doesn't sell that much. Am I gonna stop doing this music? I love this music. I love the expression it gives me. I love the the types of um, drum and bass relationships that the, that the, that the rhythms have. I like the relationship that the DJ takes it into the, the to the clubs or into the street and the ladies do their thing on it. The, all of that is to me a live and living ecosystem that will never go away. You know what I mean? So I call it that because of that reason. And it features so much people who I revere as great talents, from engineers to, to uh producers to uh you know artists. Mm. So even the artist who is doing the, the artwork for the album cover, um, Jamaican and just a dope person. So, so yeah, that, that's been uh, the focus for this album. And the subtone is kind of like collaboration over confrontation. I, I, I think that in our genre, too much we've, 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 we've concentrated a lot on the clashes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, the clashes have been exciting and they've been great, but then there's been people like myself or people like Shaggy or even people like Coffee mm. who just break <laughs> really big mm -hmm. without having to do those clashes. So I, I, my, my thing was, I think we concentrate too much on that and we put too much energy in that. And we, we, we think that that's the pinnacle of our business mm -hmm. when it isn't. And we, I've seen music like reggaeton spawn off of what we do and then become bigger than what we do because they work together you know what i mean they they they, they collab there's Absolutely. people who like matoma and there's people who like j balvin differently and then when they collab it kind of brings those those fans together Absolutely. likewise i've seen a lot of 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 executives in the music industry come to jamaica and be like yo who's the two hottest kids or the next like the give me the four hottest kids mm. And, and I show them, you know, there's this dude and there's this dude. And they're like, oh, wow, but their numbers aren't that big. Can they collab? Can they do a song together? It would be dope. And I'm like, no, because they're beefing. So that doesn't happen. Yeah. So, so I've seen them walk away from our genre because of that. They're like, I can't do that. So um, I, I'm just all about the unity on this album. Um, you know, I have two albums this year, one in May and one in March. So the March one is, is the more hardcore dancer album. It features, as I said, people who are revere in the business, like Buja Bantan, somebody who I looked up to forever um, in the business. Busy Signal, somebody who I learned from t still as skill-wise today, like he's younger than me in the business. But <clears throat> sorry, the way he writes a song, the way he spits and, and puts words together, I'm like, yo, that is dope. I think he's a great artist. Mm -hmm. um, people like Bugler, another, amazing lyricist, someone I saw do a freestyle and I've, I've, I've not seen much dancehall cats do freestyles like that, mm -hmm. where it was very potent and you could see it was coming off the top with it. Um, people like Chi Ching Ching, my first signees on the album, a very vibes dude. Um, you know, the tallest man in the business, I like to say, mm -hmm. and, and someone who is just very hype. Uh, he has a different way of thinking, a different way of presenting words, man. And so, mm -hmm. um, 
like if for instance he's in incredible this, in, freestyling as well i've seen him freestyle yeah he's, head he's nuts it's amazing yeah he's nuts and so mm -hmm. coming up with words like i love it when you bubble on your chin you know like, what do you mean that the girl is like bending down so low her chin's on the ground so you get that imagery immediately um big up to ching big up to people like jesse royal um who appears on the album with me and muta baruka there's a single that we pre-released earlier about december yeah. i can big up stone boy as the only non-jamaican on this album he he he's on the remix of the song with me and jesse royal and muta baruka the great teacher mm -hmm. so also people like sarani people like intense uh people like skilly bang and massacre mm -hmm. um and they're all songs with collabs and just like if you like hardcore dance song music old and new you're gonna like this album to me mm -hmm. um and it's, it's one of my pet uh projects in terms of i really really believe in the work that we've done i i i mentioned sarani left side mavado is on the album um rasa jai is a signee of dotty rock and also soto blessed as well and so i'm just looking for big things uh from from them and from the work that we've been doing you know i mean this album is the kind of focus on unity and just just letting people know that dance are still around you know what i mean um the next album is called Scorcher, Scorcher, and mm. Scorcher is um is is the lead single from it. I just shot the video on Friday, gone. Uh, it's gonna be a real dope video. Um, this is a more pop approach to dancehall, with something that people of my new fans like within the fa past probably say five to ten years are used to me doing. You know, <clears throat> I have a big song with Sia before. Mm -hmm. And we're about to do um we're about to do, do another one right now a big big vibe in may when it comes out uh songs called dynamite and it features as i said sia i personally think it's a number one i don't know i'm gonna see if the crowd like it but that's one uh i did work with tovlo as you know that song is out and that that's gonna be on the album uh gwen stefani and chancia on one song it's a lover's rock a reggae a reggae vibe um also people like Ty Dolla Sign, Style of G's on the album. So it's a it's a more poppy approach, but but definitely it, it doesn't miss a beat where it comes to the dancehall uh vibe. So two albums this year, you know, as I said, tour stops, the lyrics are pop on the album after drop is he true. Um now Bosi was a, a massive hit in the UK back in 2019 and yeah. really showed your ability to just consistently drop hit songs on us. Um, on. Throughout the, your career, you've racked up like over 600 million streams on Spotify alone and worked on some major collabs. Um, what I wanted to know is what's been your favorite collaboration? Whoa, I mean, being a, I've just done an album full of collabs. That's kind of crazy, but mm. there's a song, I'll talk about the, la the song I did uh, the last song on, on the Live and Living album, which is coming out March 12th, that's a song called Everest, as in Mount Everest. And I, I'm trying to say that we're, we're, we're larger than life right there, you know what I mean? Um, I start the song, Massacre is in the song, and Skilly Bang is in the song. And uh, as I was talking about the unity, you know, DeMarco was the person who built the rhythm. And it just so happens that DeMarco and Massacre kind of wasn't seen eye to eye and neither was Skilly Bang or Massacre. And I kind of got all of them to go on, on the project together. And so that's one of my favorite collabs in the past uh, few months. Mm. Uh, other than that, the, the, the biggest collabs I, I like, that I really like, one is Rockabye. Uh, reason being, I, I just, it's an ode to single moms. My mom was kind of a single mom for a, a great part of me growing up. and. Um, I just didn't think that Clean Bandits would be producing a dancer-oriented song. So that was pretty cool to do. Mm. And another collab from way back in the day was me and Rihanna, uh, a song called Break It Off. Reason being, at the time, every collab that I'd done internationally was either done via the internet or I had to go way where they were and do it in their studio. Uh, I met Rihanna on tour. She was like, yo, I love Jamaica. I want to go there. Like how many people want to go to Africa, the motherland. I think Jamaica is a motherland of culture. And I, 
I want to see Bob Marley's studio, um, museum, and all of that. And so I like come. And she came to Jamaica. We took her to this beach. We took her to the dance. We took her to the studios. We took her to Bob Marley Museum, and um, we ended up doing a song that that went to number nine on the on the on the playlist charts on Billboard. And to me, without any company pushing it, her company or my own uh, at the time, it became a huge song, and it's it's a big song in the genre. So. I'm really proud of that, that she came to Jamaica to do it. We got to show her how we do stuff. And, uh, you know, yeah, Jamaican eyes are a little bit more. <laughs> so those three, I would say, are my favorite uh, uh, collabs nice. for right now, yeah. Um, you've got a huge fan base here in the UK, um, which you've grown consistently over the last 20 years. Um, and last year, you appeared on Love Island, which is uh, a special moment for your UK fans um, to see a dance or artist perform on British primetime TV is something yeah. that doesn't happen very often here. And it's just amazing to see you breaking down cultural barriers and, and bringing the culture to a wider audience. Um, yeah, man. You know, was there a moment in your career that you realized that you had gone truly international, gone beyond that local dance or market? Well, the first, the first um, time that I got an idea of that was well, because, you know, Jamaica's a small place, so when you break here and everybody knows your song here, you're like, I'm on the top of the world, you know what I mean? And you kind of don't realize that there are so much more numbers that you can benefit from if your song plays elsewhere. Um, so the first inkling I got of that was when I, I one day went to New York, uh, it was in the night, and I was part with a virgin, Max Glazer from Federation Sound. And I think Cypher Sounds was there with us too, and we were in a club. And the port then was one of my hits at the time. And it played in the club. And then we went and got in the car at 2.30 in the morning. And it was like a Wednesday. And we were driving and the port then played again. And both of them was like, yo. And I was like, what? And they were like, you don't know how big this is, bro. Dance I don't play only on Sundays with Bobby and Jabba. And like, you know what I mean? We, we, we don't hear this in the week. This is, this is amazing. And that same week, I got introduced to to Jay-Z and to, um, to Dame, Dame Dash. And I went to their office because Dame Dash was in uh, was in talks with VP at the time. He was trying to buy my album, up, but they wouldn't sell it. But they were encouraging in their words to me. And, um, you know, Jay-Z would show me in the, I'd never seen a Billboard magazine. I didn't really look at it before. And he's like, look, Big Pimpin is playing 43 times a week. That's about seven times a day. The poor them is playing 42 times a week. Do you know how big that is for a dance hall song? And I didn't really get it. But but uh, him explaining that to me, I, I kind of understood what he was talking about. And then kind of pretty much after that, it was it was it was uh, it was to me like okay, now 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 I see what they're talking about. This is that no other dance hall song has ever been played that much in New York State or, or, or um, you know, in, in the whole genre. So, so, and it broke internationally. So that was the first one. And then also Gimme Light was like the breakout single that really took me everywhere. So those two songs gave me kind of like the, the idea of, oh, yo, this is, um, this is bigger than, than, than when it first started, you know? Um, in October of last year, you said in an interview that you had no desire to appear in a versus online battle event um, because of the clash yeah. element and the division it brings when when two fans, um, uh, you know, when two artists battle for their fans. What was your reason behind the statement? Yeah. yeah. No, I've had I've had friends that that have passed away from violent means. Many friends, not just one or two in this country, people who I did music with also. And I just feel that um, the whole clash culture, as I spoke to speaking out about it before, yes, we pay too much attention to it. So the, to, down to the point where we have become so complacent with violence, um, you know, uh, and, you know, if you think about it, if, if, if you're, if you're uh, your brother or my, a close family member passed away from violent means. 
And then your little cousin is going to come in the room and say, me boss him head with a shot and but marriage drop for what? You're going to be like, little cuz, that's that's a little too soon. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're going to be like, yo, that's too soon for me. You don't, you don't sing that in my house. I just lost a family member. I've lost many family members. And all of these people who I revere as artists, I think they're dope artists, but they're just concentrating on the wrong topic. And um, I think that artists are, are there to edit, uh, are there to e- e- entertain, but also we're here to help edify, edit, educate people. And we should lead the way in some direction culturally. We shouldn't let the culture depict. Um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't let the culture rule us. And, and I just took the stance that, no, I, I know versus isn't a real clash, but I don't want to go up again to walk on this highway and then I'm gonna go and class shaggy and <laughs> you know it doesn't make no sense for for people's enjoyment mm. for me it's like enjoy the music enjoy the song enjoy the fact that most of the artists who you love in this genre came from the ghetto enjoy the fact that they're now making money for themselves and and for and for a lot more people not just their family all around them you know what I mean that to me is a blessing and I think that we're we're actually cursing ourselves by just paying attention to only the clash. As I said before, me, Shaggy, Kaffi, Shensia, people like that, we didn't, none of us clashed, so to speak, um, you know, to make our name, you know? Um, and that's an important point to make because a lot of kids in the genre believe that you have to spit this hardcore stuff to be noticed. I didn't do it and neither did Kaffi. There's two different timelines there. Me, I broke in 1996. She broke in 2000 and what is it? Uh, just the other day, 2017, yeah, yeah. 18, 19. Yeah, so, so you know, um, I, there's no way that she had to c- compete in that respect. And, you know, we can, we can compete to make the album or to make the, the record better. Like, that's what I'm doing on this album. As I said, collaboration over confrontation. So me, Skilly Beng, and Massacre are going hard in the tune, but we're not going hard at each other. We're not bringing it to the derogatory form of talking about each other's mother and picnic and influencing other kids to be to be thinking that's fine to, to say that to other people. You know what I mean? Um, it takes a village to grow, to grow a kid. Uh, that's an old African proverb, and I believe in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I also believe in another one that says, each one teach one. So I'm here to teach. I'm here to say to, to everybody, yeah, sure. Say your clash stuff mm-hmm. to, to, to show your skill. But also try to be as skilled when you're when you're making a socially conscious song. Or try to be as skilled when, when you when you're even telling that side of the story. Tell tell the other side of the story that when you're shut up, you're nervous as fucking hell. You're 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 paranoid. Police is looking for you, other bad man is looking for you, gonna point on gun. We don't tell those stories, man. You know what I mean? We tell stories of bravado and how bad we are, and I just think it's making us more and more complacent. So, big up to big up to the versus platform. You know, I have nothing against the people who put it on or the people who take part in it. It's been also very entertaining for me to watch. But as I said, it just reminded me of of a form of of confrontation that stems way back to slavery, bro. Yeah. It's about us. Um, going against each other and it's about us um for the not uplifting others. each other mm-hmm. yeah and as i said if your cousin or someone in your family had passed away when your little cousin you hear him singing that you're gonna be like hey yo this is too it's too soon bro don't say that around me mm-hmm. so, so it's the same thing for me i mean i, I daddy gone was someone who started dirty cup crew and he let me in the group man and i became famous and the only person that everybody knew from it like internationally Dirty, yeah, that's my tag, and that's because of him. And in 2005, I got a call that, yo, he got nine shots and he died that evening. And it was off a mistaken identity too, bro. And it wasn't even something he did that, uh, uh, that made him lose his life. And he's left his two kids behind who I still am in contact with today. His brother and his, mo- his brothers and his mom, his sister. I mean, it, it was heartbreaking to me. And he's not the only one, you know, so... so that's my fam, and then, 
And then I go back into the studios and I hear a little kid talk about, oh, marrow upon wall and slip upon blood upon the ground. And it's just gruesome to me. I'm like, it's too soon for me, man. I, I, I can't even grieve. Yeah. You know what I mean? I go into the dance hall, I hear the same thing. I, I listen on the radio and they just edit out the most gruesome parts. And I'm like, I can't get to grieve. I can't get to sit down and just fucking cry that this dude is not with us no more. So my point is, sure, clash, but but think about real things too when you clash and tell the real side of the story about, about being bad and, 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 and tell, tell jail sentences, tell what it's like in jail now. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? That, that's my thing. Yeah. You mentioned um, a few new artists there, Skilly Bang, Massacre. Um, what was your view on the current state of dance or and you know some of these new artists breaking through um i i don't like calling the new sound uh trap dancer because we've always had our own identity and yeah. trap is a is a is a version of hip-hop which we helped to develop uh when you check out the line, the lineage from uh people like cool herc him bringing sound system with his father to the bronx and playing live music out in the air and starting people started to toast on the mic and they, they took it and was like, yo, this is dope. And they started to do hip hop and rap. And um, then they went, they went, um, you know, uh, they, they went uh, trap with it. And then now we're going trap. Mm -hmm. I tried to pick out any of these rhythms that are using trap drums, but they play dance -off. They play, you can still move to it. You can still move to it dance -off style, you know what I mean? Um, I think the music, the, the, the genres change over the years. Like if you listen to Chuck Berry's rock music, it doesn't sound like what Nirvana's rock music sounded like at all. But it's still rock music. It's still the same basic element. And so uh, for that reason, I'm not calling it trap dance all at all. Um, I'm calling it new dance all. And, 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 and I, I love the, the, the lyrical skill of some of these cats, like Skilly Bang, he's dope. I mean... Some people hear his first song and be like, break, palm, break, palm, break. That's just like, how could you write a hook like that? But it's a style. And it's and, and when you listen to the verses, he's really kicking um, some some things in there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, big up to him and Massacre. Um, people like Bugle, as I was pointing out before. Just dope lyricists, and I'm glad to have them on the album. And um, I, I think that... Um, that that the sound is gonna change, and 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 when when you look at it, bro, you just mentioned Bosi. I'm mm -hmm. big up to big up to um Steph London who shouted me and got me on on the track. You know what I mean? Um, but 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 in general, like big up big up big up Wiley to an um an, 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 an Idris, but it's like in general, that's a simple dance our track. Right. And to tell the truth, without without us, the stars being on it, like all of us that was on it, uh, it's a pretty dope track and I would play in most clubs anywhere. And it was one of the biggest streaming dancehall tracks of 2019. So to me, uh, I think we need to concentrate on, um, even if we're going to use trap sounds, we need to be able to play them in our own groove Cause that's what started reggaeton. That's what is influencing Afrobeat right now. Mm -hmm. That's what is influenced these kids in Trinidad who do zesty music. If you know about Prince Swanee and them, them kids, um, you know that's dancehall music. Uh, uh, and all these pop artists who are utilizing our backbeat and sound from Bieber to, you know, Rihanna to 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 to, to Drake and all of them. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's that sound is what they love. So. I just like to try to encourage the producers here and the artists here, no matter what you what kind of stone you're liking right now, please try to pay attention, have some form of the roots in there. You know? And that's what I'm doing on this album. So the tracks that do have like the more trappy oriented sounds, they're still playing dance hard to me. For sure. You know what I mean? Um, you recently got into production and, and building and releasing your own rhythms on Dutty Rock. Yeah. Um, what's it been like going from someone who's always performed over rhythms to now making a profession? I know earlier you mentioned as a young guy, as a youth, building yeah. rhythms. 
what was that transition been like? It's been long, man. Um, 2000 was when I first bought my first MP, MPC. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Jeremy Harden taught me about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, jeep, jeep, jeep. And I loved it. And I started building rhythms. And one track appeared on my second album, I believe. Uh, no, the third album. And then another track on Imperial Blaze, which I think was the fourth or fifth album. Um, and then I produced a, a juggling called Blaze Fire in 2009. It featured me and Vegas and a bag of people. It was a lot of people on that, on that, that one. I also did another one called Material in 2010. Uh, featured Cecile and, and, and Rain Seville and Nikki B and myself. Um, and then about 2015, I did something called uh, Full Speed, which featured me, Bounty Killer, Conscience, um, Beanie Man. And, um, you know, over, over the time period, it's been kind of hard to try and get people to notice me as the producer also. Because yeah. as I said before, my sound was pretty elementary at first. But now it, it, I'm learning new things in production. As you know, every day there's technological advances and differences that you can utilize to make the, the, the track sound dope. So, um, and then at the same time, I'm trying to also, you know, pay attention to the history of it. So uh, in 2017, we signed uh, Chi Ching um, and, and we, we, we started to work on his album, but we released a rhythm called Rope, which featured me and Charlie Blacks and, and Chi Ching. And then also we put out Gang Gang the next year Gang Gang featured a bunch of uh, 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 dance greats like myself and Spraga Benz. Um, you know, um, we did Kalalu, which was a big song for Ching last year too, uh, or two, 2019 that was. And Kalalu is, uh, has a, is a juggling which me, uh, features me and Delhi Ranks and a, a bunch of others as well. Then we, we just started putting out more and more projects since 2017. So uh, we did no caption earlier last year. We, we also, we, we featured Fambo and me and, and Ching and uh, Delhi Ranks. Um, and um, I think, Be- yeah, Beanman's on it. Um, also, we did Swiss Cheese that just dropped in November last year. And that's been do- going good, you know, Ding Dong is on it, Sasko is on it, myself, Ching is on it. Um, nice jugglings. So um, the, the latest thing that we did was was um, the Swiss cheese. We have one more installment to drop, which was which is Shen Sia's song. Um, but we're concentrating on to drop this album first. Oh yeah, and we, we, we dropped Ching's album in about 2018. And um, it so far has streamed 12 million for him and that's that's an amazing thing and i mean to see this kid come from a place where no one believed in him as an artist uh to, to stream 12 mil it just shows that when you put yourself when you put your, your mind to something you know what i mean you can't achieve it so uh big up to ching big up to everybody who's been checking out my productions and more and more on this album we have production from this album called live and living we have production for myself um, and also people like Suku from Wild 21, he also appears on the album. Left Side, who appears on the album, I told you about DeMarco too. Um, Jordan and Chimney Records are, is on it. Um, yeah, so so becoming more of the producer is, is something that I like, but also I'm not leaving behind the artist side. I, I, I'm a hit artist. I would like to become a hit producer. I like to produce something for somebody that sells a lot and brings them a lot of acclaim. So that's one of my, my, my latest goals to try and do, you know what I mean? Amazing. Sean, thank yeah. you so much for taking the time out to, to do this. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Um, just before you go, I wanted to ask about the Sean Paul Foundation. Yeah. Um, you know, being an artist in Jamaica, you, 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 make, a, you, make, you make a good living. And um, especially when you do dance or music and you have a hit song, and so over the years, I've helped many people, you know, I've helped people buy cars, I've helped people pay down on houses, I've helped schools when there was a hurricane uh, that happened in 2005. It reminded me of when Gilbert, Hurricane Gilbert came in 2000, in 
1989 mm. in 88. And um, we weren't able to go to school for three months because of the damage that it did to the school. So similar thing happened in 2005 when I gave money and I'm always giving money towards Shaggy's charity, which is to help the Children's Hospital in Jamaica, um, which he puts on a concert like once every two years and people donate. I donate money and I also donate my time by performing on the show. Um, and I decided that since last year was such a tough year, I needed to start helping people in a more official way. And um, we developed the um, the foundation and and uh, just, just so that other people could get involved and kind of contribute as well. So Food for the Poor, uh, which is an organization that helps people in need, uh, it helps them feed feed themselves and also uh, they help small farmers and I'm all about organic food too. So I was like, yo, I, I want to get involved with them. And we did a project where we help small farmers build a, a shed, which is just a roof where the water runs off, it catches in a thing and then they're able to utilize it in the drought times. And last year was was quoted as being, it was supposed to be a drought year last year. So um, I've seen a lot of produce from the three farmers that we helped. We're looking to help more farmers. Um, also people in need, uh, you know, it's a hard time. People couldn't work because of a lot of information as to how people can contribute to the foundation itself. It's something I shied away from before in the past because it gets sticky if you don't have the right people managing it. And um, I wanted to make sure that that was something that was done properly. So now that that's all in place, um, there will soon be ways that people can donate uh, to help these projects. And I'll, I'll outline the projects that, that we're doing uh, to try to fix up hospitals or help farmers or just give people in need. And people can contribute if they can, if they feel like, you know what I mean? Amazing. Goodness. Sean, yeah. thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jamie. I appreciate the time and thanks for helping me to, to, to spread the word about all this stuff, man. Absolutely. Uh, to all people watching, look out for two albums this year from me, SP, the girls have over ReZ. Uh, Live and Living It drops on March the 12th and Scorcher drops in May sometime. I'll give you that date soon, but look out for the two. See? Big up, Sean. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.